Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses religious practices and duties by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. My name is Mohsin Shah, I'm your host, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, last time we were discussing uh, wudu, and a question popped to my mind was that what happens when someone has an injury? Now, let's say this person has a sling or a splint, or a plaster, or a bandage um, how, does it, how does someone like that perform wudu? Inshallah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Jabira wudu is when somebody's in a position of um, have, having an injury on the parts of the wudu itself so it's nothing to do with other parts of the uh, non wudu parts let's say the back part of the body so it's to do with the parts in which uh, you do the usual wudu on it and you have injury so how do we do the wudu on such injured parts and wounded parts and the jabira is by applying um, anything that prevents the the moisture and the wetness of, of the hand of the wudu to touch that najis area, that impure area, that wounded area, which is either, as I've said, najis, impure, or it is harming uh, that part. Could be broken, bone, or, or something else, anything else. So you have to make sure that you apply some kind of fabric, or sellotape, or um, plaster, or anything, anything that actually prevents the reach of uh, the water um, to that area and there are two parts the washing parts and the wiping parts so with regard to the washing parts of the body uh, for the wudu when let's say you have um, a wound in your hand then you apply the the splint if it's broken or if it's injured by a small wound for example plaster and you make sure you have cleaned the surroundings of the of the wound uh, with water and it's just the wound which is left alone so you actually cover that wound with a plaster with a uh, even sellotape anything that covers the wound and then you begin to wash your hands as usual and when you reach that area of the wound with the jabira with that plaster you just wipe nicely and wash nicely on the uh, wound which has a plaster so you don't actually touch the wound itself because it's nudges or it's harmful so and you, you, just, you just, just go over the plaster it's exactly fine. Just, over the just plaster pretend it's the not way. there just exactly. carry on like normal exactly so that okay. is that is the jabiri for the washing with regard to the wipings now to wipe the place where the jabira is just as n normal you just wipe after putting the plaster or the bandage, for example, on the feet or on, on the head, and you just wipe all the way down, as usual, on that plaster or that bandage or that fabric. And that's counted as a wudu of Jabira, due to that injury and covering the area of the wudu. So the rule changes here to the wudu of Jabira, because you cannot actually uh, make the water to reach that area due, due to the wound or to the harmfulness of uh, the water to, to that area. Okay, Sheikh, now you've been describing a wudu jabira, but what happens if there's a wound and uh, there's no cover on it? Uh, what do we do in that situation? Well, if the water is harmful on that particular place and you cannot actually put some kind of uh, plaster or splint or anything else then you can avoid that area but you have to finish the wudu you do the wudu completely and then as a obligatory precaution you also do tayammum to have a complete uh, uh, tahara and wudu afterwards Asan Shaykhna, and Shaykhna, what happens if we have a, a bandage or a plaster that covers the whole part of uh, a body part that has to, uh, you know, has to be washed or wiped in wudu. For example, I have a bandage that covers my whole face or a plaster from my elbow all the way down to my fingertips. Uh, what happens in that situation? In such situation, 
uh, you do the wudu of Jabira as as it is prescribed and, and informed. So you do the wudu of Jabira, and then afterwards you do tayammum as well, because the whole part was covered, the whole face was covered, for example, the whole arm was covered. So you do the wudu of Jabira initially. You wipe on or wash the area which was covered by that plasters or uh, splint and so forth. And then you do, as an um, obligatory precaution as well, you do also tayammum afterwards. Sheikhna, what happens in a situation where we have some sort of obstacle on our body part where we need to perform wudu, but it's very difficult to remove that obstacle? For example, plaster, for example, um, oil or glue, super glue. It's very, it's, it's attached to the skin, very, very difficult to remove, very painful, could be discomforting. In that situation, can we perform with all? Or do, is, it, is it, you have to remove the obstacle in order to perform with all? You have some obstacles like, let's say, super glue, for example, or some paints which remain in uh, the body parts, let's say, in hands, arms, and so forth, that cannot be removed easily. And you don't actually harm yourself by uh, trying to scratch your skin and bleeding yourself at the end of the day. So in such instances, you can actually uh, do it as a wudu of Jabira, do the wudu as a wudu of Jabira, as stated, but as an extra ihtiyat or istihbab, you can also do the tamam as well. Shayla, I have a question here that was sent in by one of the viewers. And that is that they saw some of our uh, Sunni brothers that they were doing masa on top of their socks. Now, is this classified as wudu jabira or, or not? Not at all, because uh, in what situation they are doing the wiping on, on their socks or even shoes in some, in some, in some cases, um, they're not allowed to actually do that. It's against the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He never did such thing for the wudu uh, that he would wipe on his uh, socks or, or, or even shoes. Um, so what we have is that you must wipe on the skin, the actual skin of your feet, both feet. You cannot just, um, for any excuse, you know, just say that, uh, you know, I'm tired, I just came from work, you know, it's cold, you know, the weather is very it's freezing, for example. I can't take off my socks, so I just want to do the wudu on my socks. Uh, such excuses are not accepted. And the wudu is battle, of course, is, is void, which means you have to redo the wudu by wiping on the skin of your both feet. So you have to make sure that you wipe on uh, the skin itself. And we have the narration, uh, interesting narration by the Imam, السلام, one of the Imams, that they ask him that about uh, the wiping on the shoes uh, or the socks. The Imam says, if that person who wipes on his shoes, for example, and comes on the Day of Judgment, so the wipings of, of the feet would go back to the same person and he gets the, 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 the thawab and the reward for wiping on, on his feet. It's, it's, it's a credit for him. But if he wipes on um, the, the shoes, for example, and the shoes usually were made by the skin of animal in that time. So that goes with the animals. So mm -hmm. imagine the, the wipings goes back to the skin of that particular animal that he wiped on. So it is clear that in the school of Ahl Bayt and the, the son of the Prophet واله, that the wiping must be done on the skin of the feet. So Shaykhna, when it comes to Wudu Jabira, um, once the person has actually healed and the bandage or the splint or it has been removed, does he or she have to repeat the prayers again? Well, you see, the hukum and the rule now with this situation of being in a, in a, uh, in a state of wound or um, injury and with the splint around his hand, for example, or plasters on, a, on his, on his uh, let's say, face, for example. Because the situation now is, for him, the hukum is to do wudu jabira. 
that's it. Then he does according to the ahkam and the rules that he does the wudu of Jabira. When that uh, the excuse of or the, or, or the, uh, the matter or the illness or the injury is being cured, halos. he doesn't need to have to re re pray all the prayers that he prayed with the Jabira. Let's say he was uh, with a splint for, let's say, three months. And then um, he got the cure and uh, he can actually practice his work and everything as, as it was before. In this case, he doesn't have to pray all, all the three months qada. Because the hukum in that time for him was to actually pray in the state of Jabira with the wounds. Mm -hmm. And to wipe on the plaster or to wipe on the splint or to wipe on a fab fabric, for example, or a plastic. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept from him. That was his taklif in that time. So even if, let's say, if the wound or the splint was taken off in the morning and he already prayed morning prayer, let's say, after one hour they took off, he doesn't have to actually re-pray again within the time frame itself of the salah to re-pray again that salah, again. So even if, if, if you were... Um, let's say you prayed Dhuhr and Asr, you went to the hospital, they removed the, the sprint, and you came back home, and still there was time for mm -hmm. the Surah Dhuhr Asr, you don't have to repray it again. Khalas, you did your duty in that time is to pray with Wudu al Jabir. So that's your duty. So you don't have to actually repray or redo the Wudu and pray again. What's about when um, if there's a wound? And I know that, oh, this is going to heal up within an hour or two hours. Um, should I cover it and do wudu jubila or should I wait um, and, you know, uh, well, technically delay the prayer, wait for it to heal, then do the wudu and then pray? Well, again, it depends. If you are certain and sure that this wound, sometimes it's a minor wound, and you think that it's going to be cured, you know, within one or two hours, you know, it won't really take that time. It's just a small wound, a little scratch, you know, by, by a knife or by something sharp, blade, and so forth. Um, then you have to wait one or two or three hours, of course, before the sunset or the sunrise, depending on the salah times. Um, you wait, you delay the prey, even if the adhan goes. Uh, you delay the prey one, two, three hours, depending on the wound situation. And then you go to check, you go to the bathroom and you wash the wound. If it's gone, khalas, you just do the wudu and you pray. And that's wajib, according to the Sayyid's fatwa, uh, or wajib ihtiyati, uh, obligatory precaution. You have to wait. But in the other scenario and the case that if no, if the wound was deep, there was a deep wound, um, and you, you know that such a wound won't be healing in three hours or two hours, it will take at least a day or two days. Then you can pray on time according to the timetable and you pray and whenever the, the wound was healed and then you just remove the plaster and then you begin doing the normal wudu as, as usual. Ahsan Shaykh and that concludes our discussion on wudu. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us on this episode. Inshallah if you have any questions that you would like to direct to myself or the Shaykh please contact us on the details provided. And inshallah, we'll be able to answer them for you. Until next time for a new discussion, join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.